हेलो हेलो सर गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून सागर एवरीथिंग इज फाइन हेलो या कैन यू हियर मी सागर कैन यू हियर मी तो शुड वी बिगिन ना या या आई एम ऑडिबल ना यस सर यस ओके आई हैड लॉस कनेक्शन सॉरी सर ओ नो प्रॉब्लम मिस्टर वर्मा इज आल्सो देयर श्री प्रेम कुमार वर्मा सर यस ही वाज सपोज टू जॉइन Uh, no problem no i'll just check whether he is joining no. i think he has not joined yet no problem no okay sir we'll start come in the you can begin uh, no problem okay sir before starting the session i would like to request the participants to please turn their audio and video off good afternoon to the guests and my dear friend i karminder kaur program chairperson of navrozi wadia college student chapter take the pleasure to welcome you all to this first session of lecture series on unconventional petroleum resources Now, Rose Wadia College, the flagship of Modern Education Society, is a pioneering educational institution based in Pune, Maharashtra, dedicated to the cause of ed higher education for almost 90 years. The postgraduate department of Petroleum Technology is running the MSc Applied course for last 33 years, and it is a unique course in India which trains students to work in the oil industry. the present day global energy requirements are being met to a large extent with the help of primary conventional energy resources like coal oil and gas as a result the present day energy crisis and increasing gap in the demand and supply the nations have been compelled to initiate intense exploration for hydrocarbons this has triggered the search for the alternate non conventional energy resources such as gas hydrates coal bed methane and shale gas keeping in mind the present oil and gas scenario the lecture series on unconventional petroleum resources has been organized in order to provide the students a platform to interact with oil and gas professionals these industry academia sessions will help us build the confidence to step in the industry with some technical knowledge today's topic is gas hydrates and we are overwhelmed to have mr adesh kumar as the speaker of the day Mr Adesh Kumar completed his chemical engineering from Indian Institute of Technology Roorkee He is currently holding position of asset manager Raja Mudri Asset He is responsible for achieving targets of oil and gas production development and exploratory drilling and well services He has also headed the project and management office of ONGC at New Delhi 
which basically monitors all E and P projects of ONGC. He has co-authored a book titled Principles of Artificial Lift and over 15 publications in international or national journals. He has written and edited an extensive technical manual titled as Technical Manual for Production Operations. I take the pleasure to thank you for accepting our invitation and being here with us. I now request Mr. Adesh Kumar to address our keen listeners. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, respected, uh, most respected, Mr. P.K. Verma, sir. I am very happy to see you, sir, in person today <laughs> online. Uh, all the respected professors and all the students uh, of Vadia College, uh, it is my privilege that I am addressing this gathering. Uh, in fact, uh, I will start with one uh, video of ONGC where you will get some, some glimpses of ONGC in which areas it is working. Just is a three, four minute video. Please start. Before he sets up the video, I will just like to uh, inform the audience that my presentation content will be uh, brief about, I will take 10 to 15 minutes on uh, uh, ONGC activities and its strategy. Then about gas hydrates, then what is the energy scenario, role of this gas in the our uh, sustainable development, global, global scenario on gas hydrates, and uh, ONGC efforts on gas hydrates, or say national efforts on gas hydrates. So all these uh, points I will cover during my presentation. But before starting this uh, uh, main presentation, uh, just have a glimpse of one video. Are we are Is it audible? Yes, sir. Yes, it is audible. India, one of the largest economies and among the biggest energy consumer nations. It's sir, it is not there on the screen. It's with its strong you. growth. You can hear it, but uh, there's no display. This fast is video coming now? Yes, sir. Yes. Based developing also means that a responsible nation contributes sustainably to the rise of a healthier, prosperous Indian society. ONGC, since its inception in 1956, has made pioneering endeavors to realize the vision of a proud, self-sufficient, prosperous nation by providing affordable energy. 
oil and natural gas commission constituted by the government of india to delve into the vast indian geological landscape successfully explored the earth's treasures in arid deserts dense forests and the deep blue oceans around the indian peninsula and scripted india's hydrocarbon saga the commission which transformed later into a crown jewel among the country's public sectors the maharatna oil and natural gas corporation continues to lead and set new benchmarks and forges ahead on its mission of energy independence the main theme of the great story of india breaking the century old myth at the very early days of its foundation that no significant oil could ever be found in india today ongc is successfully producing oil and gas from mansana kambe amdabad ankleshwar in gujarat krishna godavari and kaveri basins in the south to assam and tripura in the east of course from mumbai high the biggest discovery made in 1974 which brought India prominently on the oil and gas map of the world and later significant discoveries of Hira, Neelam and Ratna fields in western waters and the Basin field discovery in the western offshore which remains thus far the largest gas field of India today we move further and deeper adopting latest innovations of deep sea technologies for breaking the challenges of depth high temperature and high pressure to bring production from new gas discoveries of eastern offshore in bay of bengal and in kutch offshore the latest crown in the series of discoveries is the bengal basin the well ashoknagar near kolkata was dedicated to the nation by petroleum minister dharmendra pradhan in december 2020 The field is slated to produce rich hydrocarbons promising further developmental activities in the region. This is the 7th out of 8 discovered basins of India that ONGC has put to production. Breaking the technological barriers with the adoption of the latest innovations in oil and gas engineering and a focused and motivated talent pool. ONGC continues to be a global leader in the ENP sector and one of the most valued Indian national energy companies an equal opportunity employer ONGC is among the most admired organizations of the country and among the best places to work every employee is duty bound and committed to create a healthy safe and friendly work culture for all ONGC management takes pride in ensuring that its work environment and facilities are motivationally inspiring for every section of the employees. For ONGC, safety is paramount over any operation. Its safety practices have been globally accepted among the best and have routinely been bringing glorious recognitions. Concerns for protecting the earth and the environment are important factors for all business and operational decisions. Our endeavors and the goals for making alternate energy sources part of our future business are hallmarks of our vision for the next 20 years. In recognition of its role as a responsible corporate leader, ONGC's social outreach initiatives have made a positive tangible difference to the society it engages with and its efforts are emulated and quoted for inspiration widely aspiring to establish its presence in the entire hydrocarbon value chain ONGC has today created a niche for itself in not just oil and gas but refining LNG petrochemicals and power ONGC Videsh Limited, the country's largest international oil and gas company, having widespread global participation in oil and gas business, has been contributing significantly to the revenue growth of ONGC. Almost seven decades of experience, strong fundamentals, dependable and trained human resource of unparalleled competence. has led ONGC to achieve its vision of being a largely self-sufficient Indian conglomerate relentlessly marching ahead with breakthroughs that fuel our journey 
to realize the vision of a prosperous India. Can you see the presentation now? No. Is it visible? Yes. So now it is visible, I think, uh, Mr. Thakur Das. Thakur Das? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see the presentation. Yeah. In fact, uh, this uh, video uh, will uh, uh, make my job very easy. Uh, just uh, I can now uh, run through. Uh, as you see, there are seven number of category one basins where we have established commercial production. Uh, and uh, uh, you see Krishna Godavari. Uh, where the gas hydrate has been uh, this thing discovered, it is uh, under category one. Then category two is uh, uh, those basins. There are six basins where the known accumulation of hydrocarbons in carbon is there, but no commercial production has been started yet. Uh, currently, uh, recently, this Bindya, uh, Bindyan, this Bengal basin, we have put on production, so that is under category two. In category two, we have this Andaman uh, area where. Uh, we have uh, uh, Andaman and Manadi, where we have uh, discovered the uh, gas hydrates. So, like that, uh, all uh, there are all all uh, almost uh, 26 sedimentary basins. And uh, if you see, the area is also listed here. Two million square kilometer is the online part, uh, and up to 400 meter of water depth, and then deep water. We are more than 400 meter, and the value is about 1.32 million square. Kilometer. Next, uh, this is this uh, this picture shows the uh, the different basins and their date of discovery, basically, uh, as you see, and uh, all these basins starting from from Rajasthan Basin, Kembe Basin, Mumbai of Sore, that were discovered 1974, Assam Self, Assam Arakin, and Foldwet that is in Jorhat sector it is operated from there and then Krishna Godavi Basin it got it was discovered in 1980 and Kaveri in 1985 and uh, we have about say 47.8 billion ton of oil and oil equivalent that the estimate next uh, this already I have described the say ONGC it contributes about 76 percent of domestic oil and gas production and hold 60% of domestic reserves. We have our uh, uh, this uh, subsidiary companies, HPCL, MRPL, 
and we have extensive network of outlet through these companies these are the downstream sectors which we have acquired and then uh, we are in the petrochemical area also like ongc petro additions ompl then power company in uh, tripura petronet lng we have the share and uh, uh, we are currently having a renewable uh, component or 153 megawatt wind power and 25 megawatt solar capacity uh, sir sorry to interrupt yeah the slides are not moving okay one second ye kuch gadbad hai Yes. This, te this technology is a real uh, real sometimes. <laughs> yes, sir. Actually, <laughs> it has some good thing and it has some bad thing. But today's uh, situation, due to the today's situation, we are able to have you. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been possible. <laughs> so this is the best part. is that sir we move karke dekho can you see it now yes see the movement is it moving yes yes No. so this is this is again showing the uh, contribution to domestic oil production uh, we we are contributing say 63.38 million ton oil oil and gas equivalent uh if you see the investment in last 5 years we have invested about 150000 crores as the in the enp sector and um, in the during the financial year 20 About twenty-five thousand crore worth, eleven projects were approved, and this is all those details. Fifteen projects are under execution. Uh, about sixty thousand crores, nine development and six infrastructure projects. So, this will have about fifty-one point five million ton of oil and sixty bcm of gas to the country over the over their life cycle. As you see. Uh, Say uh, I am presently in Krishna Godavari uh, KG asset, which is uh, in uh, Raj Rajmundry, which is which is responsible for online operations, and uh, the next uh, asset which has been car carved out from the this asset in 2008, that is Kakinada Eastern Offshore asset, which will now which is now taking care of the uh, deep water uh, uh, projects. and uh, one of our uh, mega project is under execution that is kg dwn 98 by 2 which you have learned from the newspapers also and uh, this online operations are uh, in three districts east godavari west godavari and krishna so this is again krishna west godavari this this figure also shows and the div, the sea is very deep here uh, like our mr pk verma has uh, Uh, worked here in the Reliance operations, uh, which is also close to our uh, area, KG 98 by 2. Uh, say after uh, almost uh, 30 meter, uh, the the say 20 meter, the well depth uh, is about 100 meter. Uh, then in next five years go to 200, and next next five years go to 400 meter like that. And if you go inside the sea from Kakinada. the uh, say about uh, 40 km or so then the well and this uh, sea depth becomes 1 km and 1.5 km so all these development are now taking place in deep water which is more than 400 m water depth uh, this i don't want to load you with this information this is about my asset where currently i am working and uh, these are the uh, different facilities here uh, number of rigs Uh, for that to support this logging operations then work over rigs then stimulation units then installations uh, 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 the pipelines which are laid to carry out this oil and gas 
first to the collecting stations this may be gas collecting station for gas oil uh, this will this is called group gathering station and then going oil going to refineries and gas going to the gas authority of india network about 2.5 million meter cube per day here oil is less gas is more uh, oil is only 500 to 600 tons per day so this gas uh, uh, is the lifeline of uh, andhra pradesh uh, we are supplying to various industries and it is a lifeline to them. Now we have very small refinery also here, very uh, 0.1 million ton refinery. This is also unique in India, that is Tatipaga refinery. This uh, process is about 300 uh, tons of condensate, where we produce uh, diesel, LSHS and mercantile oil MTO, uh, which is used in the paint industry and uh, NEPTA. So this is a very good uh, HSD we use for, for our rig operations. This is just a, now if you see ONGC has made a uh, comprehensive strategy for our upstream, then downstream and uh, renewables. Just for your information, uh, say in 2019, we were say 50 uh, million ton oil, oil equivalent in 2040, we want to become 70. We will make this 70 million ton oil and gas equivalent. And then international part from 15 million ton oil, uh, oil, oil gas equivalent, uh, we want to make it to 40 million tons. And uh, refining capacity currently 35 million tons per annum to 100 million ton per annum. And renewables, renewables uh, 0.2 gigawatt to about 10 gigawatt in 2040. So this is our 2040 energy strategy made by our top management ONGC. These are the different things. I don't want to load with these things. Then we have taken uh, various digital initiatives also uh, uh, as per the industry norms. Now com coming to the main topic, which you are, all of you students are interested as you know uh, this what is gas hydrate you might have learned by now uh, this is just like a ice like crystalline minerals basically and when it is formed how it is formed they are formed when low molecular weight gas say methane gas in our case mainly methane gas it may be ethane also or carbon dioxide also but in our case methane gas combines with water and freezes into a solid under low temperature and moderate pressure conditions. So in a particular pressure and temperature conditions, uh, this, this uh, methane uh, is dissolved in the water and, and uh, uh, dissolved in the water and forms like a ice, ice like structure, ice like molecular structure that is called gas hydrate. In fact, uh, uh, when we do the calculation, you might have learned in the gas production engineering also, when we do the calculation, there is there is a called gas hydrate curve. So at particular pressure and temperature condition, we have to uh, uh, take care of uh, uh, the condition of pipeline so that we don't land into a hydrate formation condition. Uh, if that hydrate formation condition exists, then we have to take some measures. <clears throat> like uh, say deep water operation, say in the oil production case, uh, uh, this now this this hydrate condition can be checked by different means, maybe by heating, uh, or maybe by some chemical injection. Suppose you go for a heating case, the cost is exorbitantly high. So now, if you see where it is found, this gas hydrate, basically there are two uh, places where it can form. If you see this bottom bottommost graph, it is slightly smaller. You see one is in perma permafrost areas. Now, uh, uh, just below this permafrost area, we will get the hydrate formation. If you see the dotted line, this is the hydrate formation line. Again, it can be also found in the continental slope, where slope in this uh, uh, deep water is there, and there is a slope, sloping sort of uh, seabed. There also we can have a uh, this. Um, uh, 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 this uh, gas hydrate formation. Gas will be in the form of hydrate. Now, this 
this here again the uh, this is more uh, um, in detail it is explained conditions for gas added adequate supply of methane and water methane itself comes from either through microbial or thermogenic breakdown of organic matter gas added there is a gas added stability zone means pressure and temperature are suitable to form the gas added so that is called gas added stability zone now there are the uh, the methane gas added stability zones are marine setting in marine setting say th this is the zero is the depth uh, of the surface then below that 200 meter say 400 meter to say 1000 meter this is the sea floor i think this is sea floor this first 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 is for the marine environment so from 400 meter to about 1000 meter we we have this stability zone for gas hydrate formation and if you see that is from 800 meter if you take the sea floor depth so from 800 below 200 uh, below that so 200 to you see 300 to 500 meter or more of overlying water within the water column and the base is some depth below the sea floor so basically the uh, say 8 and uh, below 800 to 1000 meters almost say 200 meter below we will have the formation of gas hydrate even this gas hydrate may be starting from 400 meter to 1000 meter if you see from uh, in this bracket so below sea floor 200 meters so this bell depth will be very less so this is a very great challenge how to drill a well here how to keep this well uh, stable uh, how to uh, get this uh, 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 methane come out from this uh, uh, hydrate bubble hydrate this thing ice like structure uh, what are the methods so that i will also explain in the next slide so it is a big challenge to produce this gas hydrate now and the source that is in the permafrost region say zero is the say uh, this uh, uh, surface then after that 200 meter starting from 200 meter to about 1000 meter this is the stability area this um, uh, hydrate formation area that is if you see the base of the permafrost say it is at 400 meter so this can for, for form from 200 to 400 meter and then below the earth also from 400 to 1000 meter so this is the uh, this is called the gas hydrate stability zone now this graph is slightly in a smaller uh, size but this is very important if you see uh, worldwide uh, 23 locations with evidence of hydrates three in permafrost and 20 in ocean environments this is the worldwide yes, and if you see the the uh, this uh, red color red color is 1000 uh, this is 1000 tcf tcf this is the conventional reserve over the if you see the worldwide situation and then if you see the uh, gas reserves in the early early unconventional uh, that is uh, in the shallow water and the tight gas if you take that that is about also 1000 tcf but if you and the component is like cbm deep deep sail gas all those things uh, it is also uh, it is about 10000 tcf that much gas is uh, estimated but if you see the gas hydrate this is very big bubble almost uh, 1 lakh tcf gas and this is another area where the they call geo pressurized brine and others but uh, this is a this is this may be a future research we don't know as of now so gas hydrate has tremendous gas and this figure shows that actually now what are the technologies to produce the this uh, gas hydrate uh, this this can be uh, gas hydrate uh, gas from the hydrate can be produced by uh, inducting dissociation by one of the following three main methods or combination may also happen that is depressurization and that may be thermal stimulation and third may be hydrate inhibition that is by chemical methods such as salt and alcohol injection 
so these are the three methods by which we can produce this now this is again is some theoretical thing what are the advantages what are the challenges basically currently we have only challenges advantages are known once we get gas 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 is pure mean so that is a big advantage but but challenges are many first first is it is very difficult to detect by the seismic methods known today we cannot have the accurate assessment how much we will be able to produce there are cons concern on geomechanical and reservoir stability concerns are there how how we can make the well stable it may collapse technology is not known geomechanical issues may, may happen then well drilling is a challenge completion is a challenge reservoir management is a challenge as on today nothing is known economics of commercial gas production that is also a very big no unknown let us wait for him to rejoin okay sir Uh, can you hear me yes sir uh when i disconnected just now or <laughs> long ago just 30 seconds back okay okay <laughs> while discussing the dis advantages and disadvantages okay okay so go to this now this presentation is visible uh, not yet sir इनफैक्ट आई वॉज एक्सप्लेनिंग एडवांटेज इज एडवांटेज आर मेनी बिकॉज इट इज ए कैन यू हियर मी नाउ yes sir. hello oh. so i was telling advantages are many because methane is there and uh, you can store uh, you can have uh, i think 160 times uh, uh, gas in a, this ice ice like structure so uh, it is in a compact situation it is available but challenges are many it is very difficult uh, to detect by seismic methods then uh, uh, we cannot do Uh, exact uh, assessment of producible fraction how much we will produce will be able to produce there are reservoir and well stability concern uh, th there are challenges in well drilling well completion reservoir management all are challenges and economics of commercial production this is under very good challenge as on today so it has all challenges as of now now just to uh, will go in a very uh, short time Uh, if you see the uh, what is the energy scenario before again we land up uh, into our situation what we are working in the country what we are working in ongc uh, for the country so that you have a very good idea about uh, gas hydrate how much progress we have made so far how other country has progressed so far because this is again still in the r&d stage so to uh, to arrive before that just i want to put in your mind uh, about this oil and gas in you if you see this uh, the oil and gas you see it is used in say oil in use in the road transport mainly in 49% almost aviation is only 8% like that it has a very big contribution in transportation sector 
and uh, whatever uh, this oil consumption was happening uh, pre covid uh, 19 and this thing uh, last year uh, before this uh, first wave now the all the consumption level have come up like in india uh, only 8% drop was there during this covid times uh, for five months then uh, it has come up to 263 million ton uh, consumption so uh, again coming to the gas demand if you see the gas uh, gas comes the number two position of uh, this is this is first is the coal sorry if you see the uh, the contribution of gas first is the contribution is by renewables second is by gas and third is by the oil like that right and coal, coal comes the last so huh? growth, growth. Huh. actually this graph shows the growth how it is growing so basically the the gas uh, which is currently say india indian scenario it is six six uh, percent in the energy basket of uh, country this will go to about 15 percent uh, by 2000 uh, 20, 27 or 2030 so basically gas will have a very uh, very big role in the uh, country's uh, energy scenario here again it is explained like uh, say we are producing 31.7 bcm domestic production and 27.4 bcm of gas we are importing in the form of lng so we are gas deficit is still about uh, uh, 50 percent we are importing so uh, india has recoverable conventional natural gas reserve about 1340 bcm which is obvious 60 percent 61 percent are located in offshore now if you see the coal bed methane reserve it is about 108 bcm so what i want to say is that say if you see the uh, this uh, uh, primary energy consumption terms coal is the highest then you have petroleum and other liquids that is oil that is about 25 percent and natural gas currently is six percent which we want to make it to 15 percent so if you see the in a global scenario it is very world say about uh, uh, this gas reserve say world 193 trillion cubic meter india is having only 1.2 Say if you see the uh, uh, production terms, say world 3680 billion cubic meter, India only 31.9. So that is the situation here. So gas role is very high uh, as far as India is concerned. And for the sustainable development also, say natural gas, it has a very high hydrocarbon this uh, hydrogen to carbon ratio so this is a better source that is what is shown here and it will be a, um, a good thing to have this gas means methane uh, for for our energy now government has taken various steps to increase the production of this uh, uh, to improve the hydrocarbon sector like say help you, you might have learned in the newspapers then open acreage licensing policy all these things and uh, marketing and pricing freedom so all these things has happened uh, the government has also done uh, uh, to given the incentive for dewater and ultra dewater and high pressure high temperature field exploration and development and uh, to promote the Unconventional natural sources like coal bed methane, shale gas, subsea gas added, government has given so many uh, uh, incentives. Right? And if you see the LNG front, five terminals are operating in the country and 11 ter terminals are planned in the next seven years. And there has been some gas pricing reform also. So this is telling about the importance of this gas 
now uh, if we see the role of gas headed in sustainable development uh, the following factors will come economic impact gas headed research and development is also providing insight into the nature of geo hazards now whatever research is happening this is also being studied what kind of geo hazard will happen if we go for the uh, exploitation of this gas headed uh, relevant to conventional oil and gas drilling this su substantial economic impact on dewater and arctic arctic energy development the scientific and ultimately economic value of this knowledge could pro potentially be considerable and the factor is geopolitical consideration gas hydrate appear to be widely distributed around the world and thus provides energy security environmental impact potential option to ease the transition to future sustainable energy systems and last is societal impacts improved living standard and enhance safety and security in both developed and developing countries so it has a very positive impact coming to the this scenario international scenario of gas hydrate uh, as you see this uh, japan has done a lead and uh, japan ministry uh, uh, established a research program in 1995 in fact this research has started since 1995 but still it is in the research stage only they did 36 wells in gas hydrate uh, gas hydrate sand bearing reservoirs in the uh, this is in Nan nankai nankai trough you know in japan east coast that is offshore basically developed a methodology to evaluate hydrate occurrence while drilling a well in 2013 japan conducted a first production test using depressurization so one of the method which i was telling depressurization means if we reduce the pressure the gas will come out from the this ice like uh, structure ice like cube that is uh, gas hydrate and uh, it will convert into a gas on south eastern coast and the country which has done the research is at the malik site malik site in canadian arctic this is arctic zone uh, where full scale thermal production test was completed means by thermal method by heating they try to produce test the well in 2002 and they also done gas hydrate production by depressurization method of reservoir in 2007 and 8 and their work done by usa world's first uh, systematic gas hydrate resource assessment was done on shore alaska that is arctic this is the this, this is showing the well there actually produce methane gas flare during the ignic uh, gas hydrate field trial alaska north slope in march 12 uh and there uh, so they have done in onshore alaska and offshore gulf of mexico also in 2012 an advanced production test program involving carbon dioxide injection so and the method is by uh, injecting carbon dioxide or uh, maybe salt right brine so that is another method by chemical method so they have used both the methods and com uh, completed in alaska china has also done a uh, r&d job in uh, south china sea now coming to our scenario which you will be very much interested the first indication of presence of gas hydrate uh, in the indian offshore uh, oh. happened in 1984 when ongc identified bottom simulating reflection for the first time in andaman offshore and after that like japan started their research program in 1995 in india our government set up national gas hydrate program nghp in 1997 now this nghp was established to see the physical presence of gas hydrate in three three sectors one is krishna godavari basin and there is mahanadi basin in east coast and then andaman offshore the total prognostical gas resource from the gas hydrate in the country is about 1900 trillion cubic meter if we take 1% of recovery theoretically 
and consider a consumption which i was telling you about 100 bcm per year then about 190 years 189 190 years we can supply the gas to the country although this looks very attractive but <laughs> for uh, we have to go a long way in fact now fiscal incentives are provided from uh, uh, from production from future discoveries of unconventional hydrocarbon this i have already told you now uh, to take forward this uh, national gas hydrate uh, uh, program uh, three expeditions were planned by the government uh, the first expedition uh it was held in 2006 uh was planned in 2006 that is expedition 1 and objective was uh to verify the physical verification of the presence of gas hydrate in indian deep water that was the first objective so for, for that as i have already told you if you see the deep water area say 1 km depth or say uh say uh 400 plus meter depth uh the, we have to drill only 200 meter or 250 meter like that and then we will encounter the gas hydrate so they drilled 39 holes at 21 sites and the physical presence of gas hydrate in krishna godavari mahanadi and andaman uh were established but were non exploitable with available technologies that is a known fact successfully completed with actual code evidence of the presence of gas hydrate in indian deep waters actually they we have collected ongc was part of this ex expedition actually ongc did this drilling so these codes have been taken and uh, codes are placed in uh, one uh, institute there is a one center there uh, NIS, national gas hydrate research center Uh, under this NGHP program established at in, in, uh, Institute of Engineering and Ocean Technology, which is uh, located in Panvel. You might uh, you you are very close to Panvel. In fact, Pune. While you go from Mumbai to Pune, then you can see our uh, ONGC complex there on the left side. So there is a very big institute there, Engineering and Ocean Technology. There. Uh, the cores are uh, put in a uh, negative condition minus temperature and uh, those cores are available there india now boasts of the world richest uh, 132 meter massive gas hydrate presence the, the the gas presence in krishna godavari with 80% saturation so basically 80% uh, is the gas in that uh, uh, secure One one cubic meter of cube say eighty percent is gas, and uh, it is at one thirty meter uh, in the deep water, and world's deepest that is six hundred twelve meter below sea floor in Andaman uh, volcanic ash, occurrence of gas hydrate has been established. Means six hundred twelve meter below sea floor in Andaman area. So that is the situation. and uh, this uh, the uh, how this gas hydrate is formed is by bacterial action right the most gas hydrate material sampled were found to contain methane produced by bacterial action based some regional region seeing gas being formed by hmm, thermogenic uh, can you hear me hello yes, yes sir you are audible yeah yeah i have to check <laughs> maybe i this is a rnd topic yes, yes. <laughs> when i am talking maybe you may get bored <laughs> next no sir it's going fine and it is amazing <laughs> it is very difficult topic but uh, once uh, everything get established what we have done in the country like earlier uh, the the britishers told to uh, our um, government that there is no oil in uh, india except in assam but russian said oil is there in the gujarat so gujarat this aglusar field was discovered uh, say in 19 uh, 1959 and then gujarat is on the oil map 
again same thing was there uh, us said there is no oil in the offshore but in 1974 we established oil in the offshore so same way this will also see light of the day we are also progressing with the other countries but it is a long way to go now another expedition which has been planned by government national gas hydrated program nghp expedition 2 the objective is identification of sites for carrying out pilot production testing under this we have did 42 holes in 25 sites now here two distinct gas hydrated bearing sand reservoirs uh, were identified in krishna godavari basin and uh, uh, this area a sand reservoir uh having limited formation of concentrated gas hydrates accumulation this is the outcome of this uh, expedition basically now and the uh, so work has been done only on up to two expedition two now there is a another third expedition expedition uh and objective is pilot production testing of at least one site in the indian deep water environment so this uh, we have still to do uh, uh testing is still to be done so this is the situation at present so far as our indian gas hydrate uh uh scenario is concerned now if you see what we have done means government of india has done where ongc is the uh the main partner say we have made a, uh, a collaboration with japan oil gas and metals national corporation and dgh dgh and v as a uh, collaboration now the idea is to develop a plan of action to provide direction and coordination for collaboration on methane hydrate technology second collaboration is with U us geological survey of the department of interior of the united states of america and dgh the objective is resource exploration hazards and environment issues associated with gas hydrate this is to be funded up field studies and research for gas hydrate this to be funded up then third is department of energy of usa and ministry of petroleum and natural gas here the objective is to enhance and accelerate gas hydrate exploration and third is india's participation in the scientific drilling program uh, in the canadian uh, this malik depo deposit uh, in the canadian uh, in canada so we are associating there also now if you see uh, further it is now further uh, expanding say uh based on the direction of the government ministry of petroleum ongc has established a center which i was telling you just now just before this and uh, it it is a core repository and state of art gas hydrate laboratory at iot indian and this uh, institute of engineering and ocean technology at panvel now uh, this uh, institute also parallelly signed the agreement uh two collaborative uh, projects with iit bombay to evaluate the sea floor stability reservoir parameter of hydrate hydrate bearing sediments from deep krishna godavari offshore areas and then it this is the active contributor to gas hydrate uh, exploratory research under the nghp program of government of india since 1997 basically this is representing the nghp program of the country this institute this uh, center at this iot institute and uh, this i have already told you the mou sound sound uh, signed between the japanese companies and focus is on krishna godavari basin and manadi basin now if you see uh, this i think uh, maybe a slightly repetition uh uh basically uh, this i have already told you 147 wells in eastern offshore have been dealt cold then 
uh, we have spent about 123 crores by ONGC on this NGHP program expedition up to two, up to two. And uh, total cost is about 617 crores. So all this data I have already told you. In fact, uh, uh, with the focus on pilot production testing, gas hydrogen reservoir discovered during NGHP2, block KG, DW, and 98 by 5 have been delineated and GCM, geocellular model for the gas hydrogen reservoir has been completed to get details of uh, cell wise uh, reservoir parameters. Uh, this is the vessel which was used actually. I don't know whether it is clearly visible to you, but this vessel was used. Uh, this name is uh, Chikku. Chikku. Uh, this vessel was used during this uh, coring and uh, uh, drilling the holes for uh, reservoir correctation. Now, I think similar things are written here basically. So, what I want to tell you is the main issue is this uh, gas hydrate, although it is uh, in a very high number as you have seen 1 lakh TCF of reserve uh, in the world. But the uh, issue is it is in a very nascent stage, it is a very in a preliminary stage. We have a lot of research to be done because once we, it is a very small length hole of the well. The say you have to drill a 200, 300 meter well, maybe 400 meter well. Now everything is in a ice like thing. How to drill that? How to uh, um, keep the casings, all these bell, well uh, uh, configuration, well. Uh, integrity intact that is a one one thing and that is when this flows once you uh, use either of the method either by chemical injection or by heating uh, if you see the heating uh, we we were studying one heating uh, in deep water in 98 by 2 this was giving an impact of about 500 million dollar this is a very big thing 500 million dollar means almost uh, 3500 crores uh, in respect of chemical injection method. So those kind of challenges are there. It will not be very easy. Now this chemical or uh, this thing has to, uh, you have to lay say heating system, then you have to lay in the sea. It has to go to the down. Again, it has to flow in the tubular. Once it comes in the bell, uh, bell head of Christmas tree, then it has to flow in the uh, subsea terrain. There also you will get this headed uh, issues. So it is a long way to go. So transport, starting from well completion, well reservoir, well drilling, then transportation, everything is a challenge. So everything is under research and I think it will take some time because already other resources are there. Where, so cost component is very high. As we know, I was discussing with the person who is the in charge of this uh, uh, gas hydrate center in IoT. He was telling, say, suppose you want to produce oil or gas, so input cost, whatever you are putting, and the output, what you are getting, output should be more. Output uh, money should be more than the input money. In this case, the input money is so high. <laughs> so as of today, uh, and so many no uh, unknowns are there. Uh, only no unknowns, unknowns are there. Uh, so it is a very high risk. It will take some time. But uh, certainly, we are working with the world, uh, throughout the world, whatever these companies are doing. And uh, certainly, one day we will achieve. So certainly, this becomes an end priority. Uh, the, uh, before this, the priority becomes like the water gas production. Uh, say, currently, we are uh, working, uh, what Reliance has already done, we are, we are also uh, produce some of the field like Vasista S1 we have put on production again 98 by 2 we are working where we will be producing about uh, 15 million meter cube per day of gas uh, that will come from the wells which are located uh, in a water depth of uh, starting from 400 meter to 
about 1500 meter water depth so uh, so that is called deep water gas production so that we are pursuing so certainly this um, um, uh, production of this gas hydrate uh, will take longer time as of now with this i want to thank you for patient listening and it is a pleasure uh, to address you all and i am very happy uh, and very thankful to uh, sri pk verma sir who has been my mentor and who has also joined this uh, presentation thank you very much sir thank you so much thank you so much for an enlightening lecture now moving on to the question and answer session the first question is from mr sumit uh hello sir other than methane which other hydrocarbons can be found as gas hydrates in india so you can repeat the question yes sir uh go repeat the question yes sir other than methane which other hydrocarbons can be found as gas hydrates in india in fact uh, so far whatever we have done the research it is only uh, cs4 methane uh, although the hydrate can be uh, uh, of the co2 gas also carbon dioxide which i was telling you and ethane also but so far india is concerned only methane hydrate has been found thank you sir the next question is from abhishek is it ever possible that gas hydrate or other natural gases dominate petroleum as fuel and if possible then how long it will take uh, like uh, abhishek i told you in the presentation itself uh, basically what happens uh, if you see the uh, consumption pattern basically say uh, if you see the oil oil is used in our say transport sector then uh, uh, it is used in the petrochemicals so uh, slowly and slowly suppose we Uh, do some alternate energy sources for the transportation sector uh, say so what are the option maybe we introduce gas we use the gas vehicles uh, say cng all those uh, and then compressed natural gas and and then maybe we use the say solar and this energy so electric vehicles so suppose we remove that part of petroleum then gas will be a one major contributor or gas gas is also used in the say power industry so it is a uh, then it is also used in the fertilizer industry so basically uh, because even gas we are importing so like say ceramic industry we are using gas we are using in power fertilizer already i have told you uh, so for energy this gas is a very clean source of energy especially it should have more than say uh, uh, 90% methane then it is a better uh, it gives a better uh, this thing and pollution is less so uh, uh, gas is certainly a very good source of energy now that is why government want to increase this presently only 6% is uh, being used in the energy sector now they want to increase its, its usage to about um, uh, 15% now if you just imagine say just like imagine like a usa how much scope we have for the gas you might have learned by now in the newspapers also that government want to spend about 1.76 lakh crore 176000 crore on gas network in the country what happens is suppose we are in andhra pradesh say here we have lot of gas but uh, this gas will be consumed up to a certain extent but beyond that or say gas coming from the uh, say deep water fields uh, this gas the total gas cannot be consumed in one state so we have to transport it so what has been insisted by the government that we will lay line now this line although already some lines are laid say hajira bijapur jagdishpur line it has been extended further i think up to rai bareilly and all that that area but uh, suppose just imagine uh, we have the lines in every district uh, then from every district to every place all these lines are laid then we can take this gas clean fuel to the 
each household once you take to each household household then they will have the same facility uh, currently we have to transport lpg lpg also we have to import so then once this gas is there then certainly we will have a clean fuel and it will be to the household then we will be a developed country once we make the all the roads and this gas source is available that is what is there in the us so similar kind of thing we want to achieve so currently uh, the government has made plan to increase this gas consumption from 6% to 15% and they are running uh, they will be making uh, a network of pipelines so that the gas goes to each uh, part of the country like currently say ongc in northeast so we have a gas network in northeast currently in uh, southern part we have a network but for middle part say madhya pradesh and other areas or say uttar pradesh it, there is no such big network or bihar so i think the integration of a detailed pipeline network will have a very extensive scope for for this gas there is high now focus is on the gas um uh, and the oil field uh, discovery has been less oil is only on uh, we are only able to produce about 17% uh, 15% rather so rest 85% we have to import so focus is on gas and gas is available plenty in the country even deep water like say uh, currently reliance is also putting two more fields there also this will increase about 20 million and the field uh, say which i was telling you 98 by 2 about 15 million meter cube per day and the we have a deep water ultra deep water field which is about 110 km inside the sea and there the we have about 20 million meter cube per day of gas reserve so there is a lot of scope for gas that is why the government is taking this step and slowly and slowly gas can be transported through the liquefied natural gas lng network by the ships and then we have the tunnels then we can regasify this so we can buy the cheap gas earlier this lng was about 7 dollar now it it will come to very less value i think it has already come around 5 or 4 4 to 5 uh, dollar per mm btu so that way ultimately country is progressing towards gas ab se is it okay yes sir thank you sir yeah tell us uh, the next question is from mr harshal navli uh, which is the most affordable technology for the production of gas hydrate uh, currently harshan basically uh, uh, now say one technology may be depressurization and there may be thermal thermal say because i have uh, experience in 98 by 2 where we were designing Uh, some facilities uh, one option was to uh, inject the chemical and there was for the heating so from there i know exactly that how much incremental cost uh, will be there in the thermal uh, system if we go for a thermal uh, uh, type of system uh, certainly chemical may be a cheaper option but as on today nothing is known this is all in very Uh, in a very R and D stage, person. So as on today, as of today, you cannot say. Uh, but from my experience, I am telling you, certainly chemical method will be a cheaper option. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next question is from Mr. Amit. Uh, in ONGC, how big is the role of GIS department? GIS. geologist or what geographic information system acha geological it is just like geological survey of india uh, no sir it's a software geographic uh, remote sensing is asking about aha ah, that jo, uh, seismic hai na seismo uh, so satellite uh, surveying okay okay in fact uh, what we have done say uh, during this 95 time only 1995 uh, when i was in institute in fact uh, this uh, dgh has uh, there was one technology uh, uh, this uh, dgh has hired one technology from us i think the as per that 
the the using the satellite using the satellite uh, they will see how this bombay high reservoir uh, is reflecting the the rays right seismic rays or whatever so once you know that reflection again the basin field which is a bigger one of the biggest field of the gas in the country they see the reflection of this gas field also same way they mapped everything and using the satellite uh, uh, this imaging technology uh, they come to this kind of conclusion uh, that we have this gas had it also and then uh, after that only this uh, uh, further research was done like uh, drilling of holes was, has happened actually so but this technology uh, after that i have not heard whether they have done this they have done uh, thorough mapping of the country by this method and after after that now we are going for the uh, this number i don't remember it is a very big number uh, we are uh, uh, going for geophysical uh, uh, this uh, exploration uh, taking the geophysical parties to the on land areas and the exploration this offshore areas also we are going but what happens you see everything cost now say uh, as a government company we are giving some budget that you have you have this budget now this is the area you survey so we survey that area but uh, as you see only say 26 basins sedimentary basins we have out of that uh, only 30 uh, only 8 are explored and out of it only 30 percent is explored so you see lot of money has to be invested even today so there is a lot of scope for any kind of technology what you are saying there is a lot of scope but only thing is money our country is not uh, having so much of money in fact this exploration is a very costly business say if you see the on land area if you go to say assam assam area uh, assam area is about 3000 meter depth the well will cost around say maybe 9 crore or 10 crore if you come to the western onshore area on land area like gujarat well will cost about 5 crores if you come to the southern part here well depth are very high it ranges from start from 3 kilometer to 5 5.5 kilometer the well and the complications are more when it is more than 4 kilometer well depth we have to drill the well will cost around 40 crores 50 crores and if you go to the go to the offshore bombay high or that area although well depth are less but costly about 40 to 50 crores if you go to deep water the well cost is about 250 to 300 crores it starts from 200 crores so that is the level of cost right so uh, certainly what technology you are saying for seismic survey or say imagine imaging of the satellite imaging of this thing uh, there is a lot of scope but what what happens uh, when say uh, we started our uh, say Burma Sahib's previous west or even Burma Sahib, they used to read from the journals and used to do the practical uh, use the technologies in the field and slowly and slowly now we have perfected all those technologies like say and uh, in in 2000 lot many technologies uh, which were not uh, given not in the uh, to given to the developing countries like uh, they were based on space technology so all those technologies of drilling uh, they have been uh, liberalized after 2000 so we have used all those technologies means you can maneuver your well uh, in say one one meter this way that way and you can see uh, every data flowing through mud you can see where you, you are going uh, what kind of zone you are going everything is known so space technologies are being used so that is how we have grown now say 95 this was a satellite imagery technology this also has been used in the country after that all the space technology has come so we are using 3d seismic 3d seismic started in 1992 first time ongc approached government in 1992 for bombay high to use this uh, uh, 3d seismic technology but this took uh, some time because of government procedure but when this rubber field uh, 
uh, was taken in 94 or so they used this technology and they discovered uh, half of the field on the other side of the uh, one uh, uh, ball area where we, we have discovered the dry wells and this rava field production rava is in the yanam area in the andhra pradesh uh, they doubled the production so basically 3d seismic uh, now 3d seismic is a uh, use use everywhere so we have very good uh, data very good information about the formation so all these technologies are being used all are uh, now available now so many other technologies if you see uh, as a uh, log logging expert or geophysical expert or even say geology expert uh, ongc or say all these big companies they use uh, uh, different technology from russia also that is called low lfs low frequency survey. survey low frequency survey there are new technologies coming from russian side also so we are using those technologies to find the bypass oil where the oil has been left between the two wells so that way uh, there is a great scope of scope for all of you being a geoscientist geoscientist when i say maybe geo geophysics or geologist or i think petrol engineers are there petrol engineers are the uh, backbone of this industry oil and gas industry you have a lot of scope say so ongc itself uh, employs about uh, 40 44 disciplines so so much of analysis happens uh, once you uh, start dealing and start taking the oil and after oil also so many engineers and scientists uh, day by day even even then you can only know 10 percent of mother earth so it is a big challenge even today uh, when uh, the now again these challenges are different from basin to basin maybe this um, uh, western onshore basin has less challenges southern basin krishna godavari lot many challenges like say 200 meter we have a oil well uh, after 200 meter it is dry nothing is there there is a difference and all together so there are uh, different uh, very uh, very much ch challenges and all these things are uh, really solved by our geo this thing geophysical methods like uh, these technologies geo gng technologies which i was telling so lot of uh, scope is there for you amit thank you sir uh, last two questions mm -hmm. Uh, the next question is from uh, again Harshal. He says that as you mentioned with seismic surveying, it it is hard to find gas hydrate. Then the, uh, is there any alternative or any R and D project which is going on? Harshal, basically, uh, what I was telling you that in 1995, when this DGS hired one agency, I am not remembering the name. Uh, they carry out this. Um, uh, satellite satellite uh, imagery imagery and based on that and taking the clue from the maybe an international uh, data bank also so they came to a conclusion at uh, that at these three places we will have their hydrates but beyond that uh, there is no such technology used as of now so maybe uh, no such technology is available but these three places uh, the uh, even if you use the seismic technology, uh, sometimes the surprises take place. I want to tell you when uh, uh, this, uh, say, the head of uh, exploration, Mr. A.B. Raju, he was in uh, Bombay. I was in chamber, he said, and the Bombay High has been discovered in East Coast, uh, where this Reliance uh, KGD6 has been basically uh, this developed this field has been developed by reliance industries kgd6 seeing the data of exploratory well he said we have discovered another bombay high but the when, when we went further we found that it is not bombay high it is not oil it is gas so basically so many surprises happens but it gives a clue so after seismography or seismic survey or any technology you use ultimately when you drill the well and once you test the well that is the ultimate 
and that is the perfect thing and after that only that data acquisition and whatever happens is the actual thing so these are the all technologies uh, which are used basically so that's what i want to tell you in fact uh, no no further technique has been used to because if you see this gas hydrate is only say 200 300 uh, or say 600 meter you have seen there it is below that seabed so you don't need very high uh, you say you uh, very high technology to uh, like say four kilometer you are send, send, sending some rays and all that but uh, issue is uh, i think uh, that's all nothing beyond that has been used thank you sir uh, the last question is from mr swaraj uh, mm -hmm. hello sir there is a news about ongc gas sale from kg basin so can yeah. you tell more about this and its importance very nice very, nice. very good in fact suraj uh, uh, say after bombay offshore where we have um, uh, in 1974 we discovered bombay high we put this on production in 26 months it is a world record uh, the field discovered and put on production in such a short time and then if you come uh, so there we have oil field gas field so many field we have discovered almost we have put uh, 2.5 lakh crores of rupees infrastructure if you see you have seen that uh, video which i was displaying uh, that infrastructure uh, it is just like a five six sto storied house uh, and then you just imagine a refinery it is it is a refinery or uh, maybe five six story refinery and uh, the you have the uh, steel structure which is uh, uh, the water depth is less le less there water depth is less there it is only less than 90 meter so you can put a steel structure and then the refinery on that so that is the best and also but if you come to this part of the east coast where we uh, say beyond 30 30 kilometer uh, we have a very high water depth start from 400 meter plus and in next 10 or 20 meter it goes to more than one kilometer water depth so here the you cannot use a steel structure you have to use different technology means you have to put the wells in the seabed not on the surface of the uh, that steel structure so all your well uh, this valve has to be at the seabed that is called subsea structure so the there you can send the divers divers can go they can attend but here you have to send the remote operated vehicle that is robot robot has to do all the work now this uh, uh, this kg d6 field which, which was discovered by ongc and given to this one of the block was given to uh, reliance industries they also put uh, this field in four years this is also a from discovery to production this is also a world record for deep water now uh, Addition to this field, there is a so if you see the western offshore area, the extent is about 12,000 square kilometer, uh, where the all the fields are spread. If you see this area, this is about 500 square kilometer kilometer area. Uh, this is called uh, Krishna Godavari KG 98 by 2 means that area in 98 by area which was given to ONGC. And uh, I think 98 by 5 was given to Reliance, I think. So basically, uh, this we also call KG uh, D5. Reliance is KG D6, we call it KG D5. So this block area, 500 or 600 square kilometer area is there, which uh, is in the water depth. The, uh, now, when this is the area means we have gas or oil within this area only. Now, in this we have one oil oil area also so oil field is also there and we have a small small gas field there are about six gas field and there are about five oil field within this 500 600 square kilometer area now for that what we have done we have made a plan uh, fortunately i was part of this uh, team which started this work in 2014-15 and uh, what we have done, 
we clustered these so oil fields clustered and these wells we have put one fpso floating you can just imagine just like a ship floating production storage and offloading fpso we call it so uh, we will place that ship oil ship you can just imagine and then flow all these wells about um, uh, 11 wells in this uh, from this oil fields so this oil oil will come with the associated gas so we you separate this oil so oil is about 50000 barrels per day that is the amount of oil which will flow from these fields and uh, the oil after separation will go to by tanker to the refineries and gas we will pump to our on land uh, plant which is near the mallavaram now uh, the other gas field which are five six, uh, six gas field uh, they will produce gas field means natural gas and they are free from oil only some condensate will come so these natural gas means uh, about say this has 88% or 90% methane so mainly it is methane now this uh, natural gas uh, we will collect on one platform in fact uh, we have divided in two parts but i don't want to confuse you basically we will collect on another platform the, that platform will be just like we have platform in bombay high it is in a low water water depth about say 30 meter water depth now this gas will come to collect at that process platform we compress the, compress this and send to the on land plant so this will be about 15 million meter cube per day gas so um, and here this uh, project which we started in 2014 and uh, so many challenges came because uh, in the being a government organization we have to follow so many procedures uh, all decision cannot be taken just straight forward we have to take uh, so many decisions so and uh, some issues were there like but now everything is in place we have already uh, put uh, five this project has been divided in five different sub packages we call it packages five packages now one is like drilling drilling of wells so already we have drilled the wells almost 28 to 30 wells we have drilled now uh, other packages are to lay the uh, subsea infrastructure means those well head kismas tea and link them in the pipelines so that part is going on then uh, for that there is a one contractor that is mcdermott is there uh, and then uh, this uh, for putting a platform there is a contractor and then uh, for putting a uh, the ship what i was calling fpso there is a contractor so like that and then everything has to come to the online plant so there is a under contractor so like that all these are working and the total value of uh, project is about 5 billion dollars 5 billion means almost 34000 crores rupees is the cost of this project and now this is working in a full swing in fact due to corona pandemic uh, because as you know almost uh, 85% Uh, uh of the things are done outside this technology is not available in the country so everything is fabricated outside india so the corona pandemic has impact in us uk norway uh, austria this thing uh, your malaysia everywhere so due to that impact this is delayed by one year so this we will be completing in june 2022 and luckily i want to inform you that uh, the asset manager there is superintending retiring on 31st of may so i have been asked to take over from him actually i am very lucky because i was there in making of this project and now i will be steering this project as asset manager of eastern of sur also from 1st of june in fact i will go one month early that is what is, has been told so it is a very good project and uh, so what i want to say why i described about the western of sur is earlier that was the happening place now happening place has shifted to andhra pradesh and that is in the of sur eastern of sur we are also working on that uh, ultra deep water uh, field which i was telling you where we have about 20 million meter cube per day of gas 
that is the potential that is a again different kind of technology because there the water depth is about 2850 meters this may be the third highest in the world uh, highest depth of the water so their technology will be totally different what we have here so i think i have explained to you in a very detailed manner mr swaraj no mr swaraj you are happy now yes sir thank you thank you so much sir due to time constraints we won't be able to take all the questions leading to the end of this session i call upon our communications chairperson ms mahima suri to convey the vote of thanks thank you karminder first and foremost on the behalf of navroshi wadia college spe student chapter i take the opportunity to put all my gratitude in words i would like to thank our speaker mr adish kumar who has taken out valuable time from his busy schedule to share a vast knowledge so your talks were very witty and informative that kindled and a renewed enthusiasm in us on behalf on behalf of the entire spe group i would like to thank and express my heartfelt gratitude for your presence and inspiring words I want to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Prem Kumar Verma and Mr. C H Sudeep Reddy for giving a hand in arranging the lecture. Thank you, sir, for having blessed this lecture with your presence. I would like to also thank our principal, Dr. P K Badhane, without whose support the event would not have been possible. I also thank our H O D, Dr. Sanjita Khan. for your cooperation a special mention to profess professor uh, mr Sag sagar takudas for organizing the lecture supporting us in all ways and gracing the occasion with your presence finally i would like to thank the students who have been a very encouraging and attentive audience thank you all thank you mr adesh thank you thank you so oh, sir i am able to communicate properly there was excellent talk and uh, we all uh, uh, are enlightened by whatever you told about this gas hydrates and uh, there are many 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 questions but we all know that it is uh, under r and d stage across world and uh, ongc in our country is doing a lot of job in this area and uh, i think students also uh, have got now more interest to uh, scout through the google or some other pages and to know more about this gas hydrates still in r and d level stage across world maximum resources but we have to tap it how to tap it that is a challenge thank you thank you sir i think uh, they can send me the question on my email uh, i will uh, try to find out for him on the ground whatever we have information any sir, question sorry. yeah thank you very thank much you sir for accepting our request we'll see you next time thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you all Thank you, Geeta, ma'am, for joining our former head of the department. Anything. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you.